Are you ready for the word? Who's ready for the word? Can you see the hands of those who are ready to hear the word? Before that, let us pray. We acknowledge you here right now, O Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love, O Father. We thank you for your grace, O Jesus. We humble ourselves to you. We want to hear from you. We want to set aside anything, Lord, that could possibly hinder us from hearing your very word. Allow us to fellowship with you right now. Just by listening to the word that you have for us today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are powerfully working right now. We submit to you. Lead us, empower us to understand your message and empower us as well to practice what we are going to hear today, to receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right. The topic of our message today is about the justice of God. God is just. Another attribute of God that we've been learning for the past nearly two months it's about the justice of God. And because God is just, it tells me that He's fair in His judgment. There's no partiality in God, but He is always true and righteous in His doings. And I would like to entitle the message, You Are Not Forgotten. You know what? I think the one of the most discouraging, if not one of those, or maybe the most discouraging thing for a person nowadays, especially during the time of the social media, is the sense of being forgotten. Right? You, you're forgotten by someone. Someone forgot about your birthday or someone forgot to invite you to his or to her birthday can you resonate with that sometimes you you're discouraged because your boss has forgotten your promotion your pay rise or maybe your, your, your coach has forgotten to give you a playing time or a, a pat on the back or to appreciate you. It's really hard. It's very disappointing. It's very discouraging to be forgotten by someone, especially your loved one. Your spouse forgot to greet you on your anniversary. Oh, that's hard. Maybe someone's forgotten your the help that they promised you. Ouch. The worst is. The sense of being forgotten by God. Lord, I've been praying for this. I've been toiling. I've been laboring. I've been coming to church. I've been praying for so long. But to no avail, no fruit, no result on all these things. Lord, you have forgotten me. You know what? The reality is, God is not unjust. I don't know why the writer of 
the book of Hebrew used the double negation or double negatives here, not unjust. Perhaps he's trying to give an emphasis. God is not unjust. He could just say that God is just. But he said here, his letter to these Christians in Rome, by the way, the writer of the Hebrew was unknown, but they say some people, uh, some theologians says that uh, Paul, but some would say Apollos or Silas, but we're not, that's not our topic for today. But for sure, what this author meant was that God is just. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. And don't tell me that you are already forgotten, that God has forgotten you. No. If that's the case, God is unjust. But this verse tells us, the Bible, which is the absolute truth, tells us that God is not unjust. That God is just. He's fair. In his dealings with people, let's see some verses that proves that God is just. He is the rock. Rock, unshakable, permanent. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does, not, who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. That is our God. That's the God we worship. God is not just omnipotent. Those attributes that we've learned for the past few weeks. God is not just omniscient. God is not just omnipresent. God is not just holy. Yes, if we believe all those things and yet God is unjust, what's the use of all those things? I don't want to live this world with a God who is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and all these omnis, who is powerful, but unjust God. Ah. This is a terrible place to live if we have a God who is all-powerful but unjust, but He is just in all His dealings. He is faithful God who does no wrong. Upright and just is He. And let's continue some verses in Thessalonians chapter 1, 6. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. God is faithful. God is just. Is in dispensing reward and punishment. If you deserve punishment, you will be punished. If you deserve reward, you deserve reward, you will be rewarded. That's what the verse tells us. God is just. That's fairness. What else? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 25 tells us, anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs. And there is no favoritism. There's no favorite with God. We might have some favorites with our kids, with our family, or with our friends. But with God, there is no favoritism. Because God is just. If he has favorite, favorite, then he is unjust. The biblical definition of justice is the things, the way, that, the way things are supposed to be. Okay? The way things are supposed to be should be anchored, should be based on the word of God. This pulpit should be like that as far as I'm concerned. You should not put it like this. So that's wrong. So I have to fix it to make it just for me. So... If one thing is not the way it's supposed to be, then that's unjust. If it is not according to the word of God, that's unjust. You're getting it? If you're not, if, you, if the word of God says, God, uh, God, uh, love God, but we don't love God, then that's unjust. Because the Bible is the Basis of justice. Things that are just. 
if things are not the way it's supposed to be, then that's unjust. So justice needs to create, to rectify, to restore, to make that thing the way it's supposed to be. You're getting me? You're getting me. Because the standard of our life here on earth is the word of God, the character of God. Beyond that, if you are going to, to do things against that, then that's unjust. It is just for you and for me sitting here in, in, this, in this room to be thrown in the fiery furnace of hell. It is just for us to be punished. Why? Because God is the rewarder of our deeds. If you, need, if you deserve to be punished, you will be punished. And we all deserve that. It's just fair. It's just just for us to be thrown in the fiery furnace. If God will not punish the sins of this world, what do we call him? He is unjust. Right? If God... Let's say the court of the law of New Zealand will not punish the murderer or the, the culprit of the crime. That would be unjust. That's why we need to put it right so that it would become just. We deserve to die on that cross we deserve to be punished and thrown into the fire furnace of hell yes we deserve that but if God would do that that would violate his another attribute of what love and mercy remember we've learned that God is merciful and loving if God would just throw us to the fiery furnace right away. Then he's, yes, he is just, but he's unloving. And that's not the attribute of God. You get the idea? But because God is love, because God is justice, because God is merciful, he sent his son Jesus for you. For you, sister. For you, for you, for us, to pay the penalty of your sins. That made him just. If he will not pay the penalty of your sins through his son, Jesus Christ, he is unjust. He doesn't deserve to be praised and to worship. I'd rather sit down on my couch and watch Netflix and watch TV the whole day. But because God is unjust, because God is just and merciful and loving, He gave His Son Jesus to us. And that made Him just and loving and merciful. He's the rewarder of our good deeds. And He is also the punisher of wrongdoings. And He made it possible. And that's why the author of the book of Hebrews that we are going to talk about today warned these Christians who were in Rome during the time, who were suffering from, from the persecution from the Roman Empire, specifically from the Roman Emperor Nero, after the, after the burning of Rome, and Christians during the time, they were persecuted. And now, they want to go back to their old lifestyle, to their old faith, Judaism. That's why Paul, uh, the, the author warned him, do not go back. Do not backslide. Because God has a better way. This is our main text. Even though we speak like this, 
Meaning, what are those things that they have spoken about? It is about the warning. Do not go back. If you're going to read your, the preceding verses, it tells you, it would tell you that do not give up. Yes, you've already experienced the goodness of God, your salvation, you're already saved. Come on, just because you are being persecuted, just because you are being maligned, mocked because of your faith, come on, continue. Do not give up. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, beloved, we are convinced of better things in your case. That's what Joe exhorted a while ago. With Christ, it is better. His ways are better. In the book of Hebrews, if we're going to study the book of Hebrews, it would teach you that Jesus Christ is better than the Old Testament. He is better than the sacrifices that they used during the Old Testament. What's the sacrifices they used during the Old Testament? Lamb, sheep, bull. And who was the sacrifice in the New Testament? Jesus, the full and final sacrifice for all our sins. It means to say that Jesus is better. He is better than Moses, better than the prophets, better than the, the high priest during the time. The high priests were humans. But, well, Jesus Christ is now our high priest. Yes, Jesus Christ died, but here right now, he is still our high priest. He is seated at the heavenly realm praying for you. He is the high priest. That's why in, that's one of the theme, one of the themes of our book of Hebrews. That Jesus is way better than your previous faith. That's what he's saying. That's why do not give up. My death is not cheap. My blood is not cheap. I died for you, my son. Do not go back to your old self, to your old lifestyle, to your old faith. I died for you. My blood shed on the cross. That wasn't cheap. Do not give up. Because I am just. The result of my justice is not you to go to hell or to be crucified. The result, the final result of my justice is for you to be saved. You deserve to die. You deserve to be crucified. You deserve to be thrown in the final furnace of hell. But God Despite of that justice, he led us to salvation. And that salvation is not cheap, my friend. That's why it said, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and love you have shown that you have shown him. In verse 11 says, we want each of you to show the same diligence. In verse 12 it says, inherit what? has been promised. I highlighted those things and I would like to hammer this. Three points that I would like to share to you today. You are not forgotten because God is unjust. I, yes, God is not unjust. If God is unjust, then you can be forgotten. But God sees your work because God is not unjust. He is just. God is the God of justice. Again, let's repeat from verse 10, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. Let's stay here first for a while. Let's camp here for a while. God will not forget your work. He hasn't forgotten your labor, your perseverance, and your sacrifices. I want you to, I want to marinate this word to your mind right now, like marinating a, a, a pork barbecue. Mm. Come on. Your work, your boss has forgotten your, your labor. Perhaps your manager, your workmates don't see your labor, your hard work for the company, for your workplace, or even to your ministry. Perhaps no one sees your, your pain and your tears while you labor, while you minister for the sick people, for the problematic people. 
No one sees that. Only God sees you when you cry. When you're in pain. Because God is just. We could easily revert to our own self and abandon God. Because we thought that God already forgotten us. No. No one has forgotten you. Yes, you could be forgotten, but God will not. The love that you show to God, no one sees that. No one sees you when you have your personal devotion. No one sees you when you pray at the back or behind the scenes. No one sees that. But God sees your prayer. When you read the Bible, as if there's no fruit, as if there's no result on all these things, but God sees all those things, my friend. And even the help that you help, that even the help that you extend to people, even to the random people that you meet at your workplace or maybe at the school or maybe in the cafeteria or in your community, God sees all those things. And when you help the poor and when you help someone by faith, God sees it as if you are all that, that you're, you're helping God Himself. God sees your work because He is just. If God starts closing His eyes and as if He doesn't see all your works, then He is unjust. But because God is just, then God sees your work. Knowing that God sees my work, I have the confidence. Because it says a while ago that God is the rewarder of our good deeds, but he is also the punisher of our wrongdoings. Secondly, because God is just, God wants us to persevere. If you know that God is just, then you have to persevere. There's no fruit, Pastor John. What's the use of coming here in the church? What's the use of praying? What's the use, Pastor John, of going to, to life group? What's the use of attending this, uh, this seminar, this, this, this teaching of yours? There's no use. There's no point. There's no point of persevering. There's no point of it's a waste of time. It's, yes, it's useless. It's nonsense. But God is just. Persevere. You need to persevere because your perseverance your perseverance will pay off sooner or later. You know what? When you persevere, you are gaining something. You're gaining wisdom. You're gaining strength. You're gaining close relationship with God while you persevere in prayer. God is making in you. God is making through you. God is making for you. And you can persevere and you can stay Faithful to the very end, it says, as it says here, we want each of you to show the same diligence, same diligence. Remember this, Christians, the recipients of this letter, the Hebrew letter, part of our Bible, just so you know, they were received, it was received by Christians who were undergoing severe persecution. But they're still showing love to God, still showing love to people and helping people. And it says here in this verse, show the same diligence. Yes, you've been waiting for so long. Yes, as if you're already forgotten. Yes, as if, as if you are already abandoned or not appreciated by some people. Continue to show the same diligence to the very end. For me, that's perseverance. And I'm telling you right now, my, one of my favorite verses, which is the, that says, do not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap the harvest if you will not give up. To the very end, God wants you to persevere because he is, he, he is true to his, he, he's true to his word that he is just, that he will judge fairly. He would dispense his fairness to all people so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Wow. Another 
verse that could support this, that whatever you do, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Maybe you're cooking. Maybe you're gardening. Maybe you're just dialing uh, this to, to contact a, a friend or a customer, a client. Maybe you're just inviting this person. Whatever you do, what are you doing? Always see to it that you are doing it for the Lord with all your heart. I'm helping this person because it is the right thing to do. This is the way that is supposed to be. Justice. If I'm not helping poor people, if I'm not helping the marginalized people, if I'm not helping those who are disadvantaged, then that's unjust. That is not the way that is supposed to be. I'm telling, I have, I have told you a while ago that justice is to rectify, to restore. You have been restored. Our relationship with God has been rectified by, send, by giving the son, by giving of the Son Jesus Christ to us, to die for us. And uh, the same way, we have to do the same. We have to bring justice as God's conduit, conduit of, of His blessing to people. Remember, this justice is a, a communicable attribute. You've learned from the past few weeks that there are two types of attribute of God, which is incommunicable and communicable. Incommunicable attribute of God is only exclusive to God, but communicable attribute is, all, communicable attribute is also uh, expected of us human beings. That's why when God is just, we have also to be just. We should also show, you should always, you should also show justice to people. And by doing that, persevering, you have to persevere. These Christians who received this letter of Hebrew, they were about to give up and they were about to backslide and go back to their old lifestyle because of pressures and trials in life. Continue to persevere. Show diligence, same diligence to the very end, to the very end. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. When you come to here, here when you usher people, when you guide people at the car park, you are not doing it for Pastor June or for the leaders of the church. You are doing it for the Lord. If, you're, if your own motivation is to... to, to to impress people or to satisfy the leaders of the church when you do your ministry, your menial ministry, your menial jobs in the church, then you won't last. It would take, it would just for a short time and you will, you will give up because your motivation is external. Your motivation should be internal. The Christ in you, the spirit in you, I'll go to church because I'm not expected by my pastor to come there. But I am worshiping God with all my heart. I'm going to worship God. I, go to, I will attend my life group. I will attend this, this training. I will attend all these things for the glory of God. I'm doing it not because I want to show up to people that I am mature than them. That's not, that shouldn't be your motivation. You won't last, but your perseverance should always be motivated by your faith in Christ. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. That's a whole sermon itself. It's the Lord Christ you are serving. When you pray, you are serving the Lord. When you help people, you are serving the Lord. When you visit a sick person at the hospital, you are serving people. When you give to the church, you're giving to the Lord. When you give to that person, you're giving it to the Lord. It is, it, it, it is just a way of saying, Lord, I would serve this person because I want to serve you. I want to love this person because I want to love you. If that's the case, I would, I would tell that you can persevere because you have a right heart and a right motivation. When you're already tired and weary, tell yourself, I'm doing this for the Lord. Thirdly, God fulfills His promise because God 
is just, then he would fulfill his promise. We do not want you to become lazy. Ouch. Yes, it is very explicit with the words of this author telling these Christians in Rome do not become lazy. Because if we are discouraged, we don't want to persevere. If we are not appreciated, we become lazy. I don't want to go. I don't want to serve. No one is appreciating me anyway. No one likes my presence there. I don't, want, I don't even receive any thank you or something. Do not become lazy, my friend. In short, do not become lazy. We have a tendency to become lazy when we don't, have, when we don't get what we want. For example, in the company, oh, I don't want to go do that. Let those people who received their, their promotion do that. Let those people who are always appreciated by our boss or manager, let them do that. I don't care for that, with that job. You don't care because you're doing it for people. If you're going to do it for the Lord, it doesn't matter. You would get the credit. Come on. Someone's watching you. God sees that. Don't become lazy. Oh, it's raining, Pastor Jim. I don't want to go out here. I'm tired, you know. Too much OT, Pastor Jim. I don't want to attend. I don't want to go to church today. Don't become lazy. Are you all right with that? Who's lazy? There's no lazy person in this church. No, not that. In other church, yes, perhaps. But here, no. We're all on fire. We're all motivated. We want to do all things for the Lord. I want to come to church early, five minutes before two o'clock. What's your motivation coming to church early? So that you have a car park? No. So that you will be there. Oh, I know. I would encourage someone. Five minutes before two o'clock, I'm going to encourage someone. I'll be there early because I need to work for the Lord. I'll just continue to encourage a person, maybe pray for this person so that I can serve God through this person. But to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Your perseverance should be motivated by your faith and patience. Faith and patience cannot be separated. They're inseparable. Faith and patience. There are people who are intrinsically patient. Do you know those some people who are intrinsically Patient? Yes, they're patient. No matter what, I would persevere because that's me. That's my nature. I am patient. But if your patience is not anchored on your faith, that's useless. Your patience should be anchored to your faith. Your faith should be anchored in the word of God. And when you are, if you have faith, then... It should result to patience. I, because my faith says that I am going to experience these things from the Lord. My faith says that I have to be con continue to serve God and, and I'll be patient with this. My, my, my Lord just told me that he would do this and do that. Because that's the word tells me to do. And I'll be patient on waiting in prayer and in serving God. But I'll be patient. With what? Oh, I'll be patient. I'll, I'll pray that I'll have this million dollars next month. I'll be patient. And that's not based on your faith. That's based, based on your wishful thinking. So, make sure that when you exercise 
patience, make sure that it, that is based on your faith. Or else you are just waiting for something that is not going to happen. But if you're going to exercise your faith, make sure that you have patience. Oh, I have faith. I want it now, Lord. Make it happen now, Lord, or else you are unjust. That's impatience. It tells us here to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And there was an example given to us. Oop, let's go back. There was an example given to us by the writer of the Hebrew in the name of Abraham. When God made his promise to Abraham, what was promised to Abraham? A descendant. At his old age, he was promised a descendant. Many descendants, actually, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. At his old age. There was some problem along the way. But still, Abraham was considered as faithful and patient. That's why Abraham received what was promised. That's the example that the Hebrew author cited for us to imitate. Look at Abraham. At his old age, he was promised a son, to be the descendant of many nations. Yes, he waited patiently. He waited patiently because of his faith. Make sure that you grow in your faith so that you can bank on that. You cannot bank your patience on something that is not biblically based. You have to be patient because you know for yourself, because the word of God says so, then you can be patient. You can wait patiently. Remember, God is just. In all his doings, he is just. If God is just, in all his doings, he will not do anything that is unjust. He will not do anything unjust. What happened to you would always be just in the eyes of God. And yes, for, 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 for this, at this time, perhaps you are experiencing unjust injustice from this world. But God is rectifying it, restoring it. He wants you to experience justice. You might experience injustices in this world, but God wants you to experience justice. Justice means flourishing in all areas of our lives. We flourish in our relationship with God. Right relationship with other people. Right relationship with our environment. And right relationship to yourself. If there is a wrong relationship with those four, then there is injustice. It needs to be restored. So you are not forgotten. A very simple message that I know that many of you need to hear. God sees your work. I don't care if people... Put a blind eye on you. God sees your work. That's enough for me to go on in this life. Knowing that he sees my work. Because his God sees my work. I could continue doing, persevering on what I do for God. Because I believe because he is just, he would fulfill his promise. Without his justice, I'm sure I don't have the guts to persevere. Because I don't have the faith to claim and to hold on to His promises. Just like this author warned 
the Hebrew people or the Christians in Rome. I would like to echo that. I would like to warn you. Your pain, your struggles that you're going through right now, do not give up. Keep doing things for the Lord. Tell the person next to you, you are not forgotten. No, you're not forgotten. No, you're not. God is just. Can we all stand? Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are just. You are just. And because you are just, I could stand here and raise my hand and worship you. Because if you are not just, I don't have the freedom, the liberty to stand here and raise my hand and worship you. Because in your sovereignty, in your, in your power, you could just kill me right away because of my sins. But because of your son Jesus who died on the cross that satisfied your justice I have the privilege to stand here to worship with these people together as a body of Christ I can continue doing the work of the Lord you could continue doing the work of the Lord not necessarily in church do the very thing that God asks you to do inside your home, in your workplaces, in your relationship. God has called you something for you to bring justice to a situation, to a person. experiencing injustice and thank you we are the extension of your office here on earth you are not here God to reach out to people but we have here the church as your body to be the reflector the mirror the extension of your hand bring justice to our workplaces, to our church, to our community, homes, city, nation, and beyond. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. If you're here today, if you want to experience Jesus in your life, I want you to open your heart to God. I want you to open your heart to God. This is your opportunity. This could be the best decision that you could make in your whole life by asking Jesus to be the Savior of your life. We all deserve to be punished. We all deserve the death sentence of our sins but Jesus Christ offered himself to be the sacrifice the payment for all the sins I have done that many of you people here you've done that already if there are people here right now who would like to accept that offer from God giving you his son all you need to do is invite him into your life and 
receive the forgiveness of your sins and the salvation of your soul. If that's you, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. All my sins, please forgive me. Residing in your life. It is my prayer that you will live a life with purpose, with meaning, and full of life. This is my prayer for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.